Okay, so in this quick video, I'm going to go over why the function e to the ix traces out a circle in the complex plane. So in the normal xy coordinates, the function y equals e to the x has a very predictable exponential shape. However, in the complex plane, where we have the real part and the imaginary part, the function e to the ix traces out a circle, which has incredible implications when you're doing Fourier transforms and has many applications. So I'm going to go over why this is. So we have to remember the first, the three conditions that make the function e to the x unique. So the three conditions are that f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y, which you can verify easily, f of 0 equals 1 and f prime of x is some constant a times f of x. So we can now apply this quickly to the complex plane. Let's do that here. So we have the real part of z and the imaginary part of z. So we know from condition 2 that f of 0 equals 1. So we're starting out here at 1 comma 0. And this is the function f of x equals e to the ix. So if we look at condition 3 now, we know that f prime of x is some constant times f of x. So if we take f prime of x, we discover that it's i times e i to the x to the i x. So we know that i is pointing upwards in the complex plane. So we know that the rate of change of the function is pointing straight up right now. And we know that it is perpendicular to the real plane right now. So whenever we have the rate of change being perpendicular to the function, um, as in physics, where acceleration is perpendicular to velocity, we know that we're moving in a circle. And you can verify this, where at every point, the rate of change is perpendicular to the function. And these actually form tangent lines. So that was just a quick overview of why e to the ix traces out a circle in the complex plane. Thank you.